Hi, my name is Ramona Morrow, and I'm the author of Jamie's Pet. And I started writing this book 25 years ago when my son was five years old. Jamie's Pet is about a little boy who wants a pet, and he's not sure what kind of type of pet he wants to get. So he tours the pet store with his mother, and he comes across a pet that he wants. You can check out my book. It's available on Amazon at paperback, ebook, or audiobook. Thank you. My name is Tanya Fife, and before I was a writer, I'm a professional figure skater, and I've always wanted to write, and in between actually getting my books out, I also became a veterinarian. Um, so all these experiences in my life have led to a lot of creative ideas that allowed me to create some fun stories and um, currently we're really promoting um, one of my favorite, well my third book in my series which is Secrets Abound in Missing Lake and it's the third book in the series but it's, it's a two-time award winner uh, this year. It won two Distinguished Favorite Awards and um, the book is a lot of fun and it stands on its own. You can read this book without having read the first two books. Um, the character, the main character is a 16-year-old high school student from the town of Missing Lake, which is a fictional town uh, based on the town of Sealy Lake, Montana, where I currently live at this time. Um, I was born and raised in British Columbia. Uh, we moved to Montana 20, I guess we moved to the United States um, about 20 years ago. So after moving to the United States, it actually was 25 years ago, we started in North Dakota and now I live in Sealy Lake, Montana. Um, we still uh, keep our ties with Canada and, and the book main character does as well. He's based, um, the young boy is based with his parents in North, in Montana, um, but his mother still lives in Vancouver. So there are still some Canadian ties, which is really exciting for me. And that's, I'm really happy to work with Maple Leaf Publications um, because of that fact, because I'm, I'm still really proud of being Canadian as well. Uh, the first book in the series is Lost and Found in Missing Lake. You'll notice the cover art is very different from the second and the third books because the first book, when I self-published a few years ago, I used just a stock art that was one of the options available. Uh, after that, for my second and third book, um, I asked a good friend, his name is Ben Brick, uh, he is a graphic artist and these were the first cover books that he's ever done. So the second book is uh, The Dragons of Missing Lake and Ben Ben was just very happy and excited to help out with, with all the art and he's done a fantastic job. Um, so again, the second and third books are very, very different cover-wise, but they are still the same series. I call it the Missing Lake series. Um, my inspiration for, for the series was, um, I actually closed my veterinary practice in Sealy Lake a few years ago. And at that time, um, I, I just started a house call practice and I was a little bit down about closing my veterinary practice itself, largely because of the population. We just, we have a population of about 2,000 people in Sealy Lake and it's not quite enough to sustain a full-time veterinarian. The house call practice is rewarding though. Um, but I asked myself before I began writing the book, what, what would inspire me to maybe open a clinic again? And I jokingly thought to myself, if somebody brought me their pet dragon, I go for it. And that's what led to the series in this book. And, and um, it's, the books are written in real time. They are, are current in life. And, and again, the, the third one just wraps everything together. The fourth book is in process right now. Uh, all the books end, they could end on their own, but they also end in a way that leads to another story. And the third book definitely ended that way. And I have so much encouragement from my fan base and friends that um, that want that fourth book. So the fourth book is on its way, hopefully this winter when I'm snowed in in Cedar Lake, Montana, and all I can do is plow myself out in the mornings, I'll write during the day and plow at night. So in the winters in Montana, we, where I live in particular, we get an incredible amount of snow, which is comes up in these series because Luke, my main character, um, who's 15 when we start the series, he's 16 by the time the third book rolls around, um, he, him and his father raise sled dogs and with the sled dogs, it's a um, it's a art that or a sport that I really wanted to highlight because I don't think a lot of people really understand what goes into raising sled dogs. Uh, I certainly did not. I know what goes into taking care of them medically as a veterinarian. Um, but having known uh, many mushers who lived in Sealy Lake, uh, when we first lived there, five of my clients competed at the Iditarod um, sled dog race. So that. Through that, I, I learned very much through them about their care of their pets. And it's not a main focus of the book, although it's a main focus of my character because they raise, I think by the end of the third book, I think they've got about close to 30 dogs now, him and his dad. And they, they go on the sled and they train and they, they ride. And, and it's, it's a real passion that I'm trying to show 
in a positive way for sled dogs because again it's a sport that's not really well known um, I don't think it gets a ton of great media coverage and I really wanted to highlight that in a positive way through my book so the, the snow in Sealy Lake brings the mushers um, it brought my characters to see or to missing Lake Montana and that's where um, that's where the mountains of Montana where these mysterious dragons still live and I'd, I'd like to think in a fun way that maybe there are some in those tall mountains of Montana maybe there are maybe there are some dragons hiding out there still so I'm excited to work with Maple Leaf Publications. Uh, they have been really great about getting us um, off authors up into Word in the Street. They've been very, very supportive. Um, dealing with them has just been great communication and, and lots of fun as well. We've all been laughing too. Um, being able to be present with a, a team like this in Lethbridge, Alberta, where I have many friends and, and family who are here from the, the high school world, from my, my veterinary world, it's, it's just been a wonderful experience. And, and the main thing about my books is that they're for anyone. A child can read them. Um, I recommend 10 years and up. My main character, again, starts his age at 15, but one of my biggest fan bases are middle-aged and, and older readers. My, my husband, who's one of my biggest fans, um, him, he's a physician and, and all of his partners have read the books and can't wait for book four uh, to come out and I can't wait to share it with you. Hopefully, hopefully next year's Word on the Street will be marketing book four for you guys. Um, I'm already eight chapters in, so uh, once the snow starts flying and, and I get off the golf course, then I'll get back, I'll get that book four going for you. And so I talk about body language as well, how we treat people with our body language. Uh, I, I use the uh, illustration of the letters. Uh, when we think with our hands, we do things with our hands and we go places with our feet and we say things by the way we hold our face and the smile that we put on it. And all of those acts are things that we do that help people understand that we have a, a relationship with them. Uh, you can get by without doing anything for anybody when they do an act of kindness. You don't have to say anything. Uh, but when you do and you go with your feet and you speak with your hands and you carry your body in a way that lets them know that you appreciate what they did, it's a big help to them to recognize that they did something of value to, for you and they want to be uh, applauded for it and they don't look for anything in expectation of return, but it does help them to want to do it again because you did appreciate what they did. And so uh, that book has uh, hit the marketplace. I've, it has traveled to six international book fairs in the course of the last two years. I've been on several different book tours throughout the United States. And uh, Maple Leaf Publishing Company called me and told me that they had my book and were interested in doing something with it. So I arranged for them to bring it to Canada and put it in the Canadian bookstores. And in that process, they, they gave me an opportunity to come to Canada for a book tour. I started out in Halifax a week ago in Nova Scotia. And a week later, I'm here in Lethbridge, Alberta to sign my book and pass it on to the, those people who come to the Word on the Street program. Uh, and I'm very happy with way, the way people, uh, Maple Leaf has been handling my book because not only have they been promoting it in their bookstores, but they've already translated it into the French-Canadian language, and that's another plus. So I'm very appreciative of the work that they've done for me and how they've helped my book to be promoted. And uh, I believe it's the people that are interested in it call me all the time and say that it's a book that's of value to them and they appreciate it and they think it's a timely message that we all need to hear. So I'm very happy with what Maple Leaf is doing, Mark, Maple Leaf Publishing is doing for me. It's a wonderful experience with them and I appreciate it. So since I've had such success with this first book, I've decided to write a second book which is called Saying I Love You and Beyond is Saying I Love You Enough. And it can be ordered through mossgrovesloveNotes.com it can be you know, obtained by looking onto my website and ordering it from them. And uh, I believe that the, the second book will have the same success that my first book has had. I have publishers already calling me about it, and I'm anticipating that it will also be successful. Many people will want to read it as well, and I hope you do too. And so I appreciate your looking into it, and, and for those who have attended and, and, and been a part of this process, I, I just want to say thank you to all of you. My name is Clarence Bowles. Uh, these are, this is the book I'm uh, promoting right now. This is my memories of my president, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. 16 years old, watching the convention, not a political nerd in any way, but he fascinated me. He fascinated me during the convention, and then I pretty much forgot about him until 1960 when he was running again. And he was my choice for president. I was too young to vote for him, but I certainly would have. 
and I followed him until his assassination. That was a seminal moment for me. I was stationed in Japan at the time, and I, I couldn't believe it at first. And my views of the presidency have changed. He, uh, he has been my inspiration, and he still is my political inspiration. And this book is in dedication in my memory to him. And this is what I remember of him. So I said, I'll read if you one click I'd like to read the last. The man lives, the man dies. For me, that is John Kennedy, and he still lives in my memory. This is an emotional book for me, as this one is also. This Vietnam, is, it took up most of my career, and I wanted to share what my emotions, my feelings of the war are. I changed from uh, total support, especially with John Kennedy, and now that has changed, and now I wonder what we were doing. We were, we were wasting our time, but the big numbers, who were we fighting? Was it the United States against North Vietnam? Were we running North South Vietnam? I don't know. I wish it was over, I wish we hadn't been there, but you can't change history. Mistakes were made. Many mistakes were made. And looking forward, how do we avoid those same mistakes? I don't really know. What we need to look at is it in the interest of the United States in Vietnam? Was the United States threatened by North Vietnam to Vietnam in any way? What difference would it have made if South Vietnam, if Vietnam had been unified in 1956 in the scheme of things? It happened later, an and we survived. As that one uh, South Vietnamese official said close to the end, <coughs> he said for them, the battle for South Vietnam was one of survival. For the United States, it was an annoyance. Vietnam needs to be behind us. We need to learn our lessons from it. And what can we learn? Is the United States threatened? If not, My name is Jamil Sukkar. I'm a construction manager from Los Angeles, California. I've been in construction for 36 years now. I'm a civil engineer by education. And the reason I wrote my book is the following. You know how people graduate from college in a certain major and then when they go to the real life work, they tell them what you studied there is one thing and what works in real life is another? Well, this book teaches you exactly the construction management techniques from a real life perspective. It means sharing real life stories, experiences, it explains the theory, but also tells you how it really works in real life. And that's why this book is called Real Life Construction Management from A to Z. It takes you from phase one of a construction project, from design all the way to construction completion. But from, again, it, it goes through every single phase, explaining the theory and then how it works in real life and the best tips. And uh, I, there's a chapter in there I call real life gauge every phase of the way. And it gives you my real life experience. It's excellent for anybody practicing construction management, whether you're an owner's rep or you're a, a rep for a general contractor, this book is for you. I'm here with Maple Leaf Publishing and they are helping me uh, advertise my book in this really nice event in Toronto. Very professional outfit and I really appreciate their efforts in helping me out. Hi, my name is Carol Maxineau. I am so excited to be here to um, promote my book called Kings, Curls, and Coils. <laughs> Kings, Curls, and Coils, the ultimate guide to natural and healthy Afro textured hair. This book, Kings, Curls, and Coils, the ultimate guide to natural and healthy Afro textured hair, is for women with, with Afro textured hair who are experiencing challenges and struggles in order to overcome their insecurities and feeling less confident in order to embrace.
embrace and care their hair with love. With this book, is help them to improve their confidence, knowing what to do, the remedies and products, and a regimen to guide them in their hair care journey. Me, working with uh, Maple Leaf Publishing, has helped me to promote my book and to get my book out to viewers and readers and my specific audience who are in need of this book so they can learn the strategies and implement them right now to help them to be successful in their hair care journey so that she can feel successful in her hair care journey. And I'm so excited to be here at the Maple Leaf Publishing um, book magazine event to broadcast and to show my hair. King's Curls and Coils, the ultimate guide to natural and healthy Afro textured hair. Hi, I'm John Knight, and I'm a first-time author. Uh, I'm looking to get a number of books out to uh, make people. Th I like making people think, and so I like making people think through writing, through creativity, through inspiration. And so I decided to go into writing because I figured I wanted to see at least something behind that would inspire and motivate a number of people in various genres of storytelling. My first book, The Impossible Earth, as an example, asks, what if tomorrow's yesterday wasn't today? And it's a very good question because it actually makes people stop and go, what does he mean by that? Actually, I had a gentleman do that just today. And it was interesting in that I was able to use a scene in the environment around us as an example. I said, say this boat in the dock here wasn't here because something happened yesterday. It wouldn't be today because that boat isn't here. Any little thing that is made different in the past impacts the present and the future. And that's what this book explores through the eyes of a middle-aged 30-something 30, oh, 30 Caucasian male. I've average Joe being swept up in a series of events and taken to a parallel dimension that allows him to actually see how things could have been different if society had taken different strokes to achieve different goals. This is the first of a series of books, which will all be called The Impossible Earth, but we'll have taglines. The next one is called The Impossible Earth World Wide Web. Uh, and a percentage of each book sold will be donated to either a chosen charity, in this case, Vanconi and Nemia Research. In closing, I find that writing is a great way of expressing emotion, thought, and motivation all at the same time. And I hope that my books would allow that inspiration to be motivated to farther distances and deeper depths than anyone has ever considered being able to reach. Hi. I'm Paula Calamaris and I represent uh, Camilla Chance. And uh, Camilla Chance is an Australian author. She is a bestseller. Uh, her book, Wisdom Man, was written and won the uh, Best Book Awards winner for the American Book Awards in, I think, 2005 when she first came out with it. We have, it's translated into six or seven different languages with a Spanish version coming out soon and we have a French version here with us today as well. Uh, it's about an indigenous Aboriginal leader, uh, Banjo Clark, who advised Prime Ministers and others, and Camilla and he had a 27-year conversation. In addition to that, her new book is Melissa and Kasho. Melissa and Kasho is a book set in um, Florence, Italy, about a young, shy teenage girl who feels lost in high society. And she ends up meeting uh, a ghost named Kasha, who's an indigenous man from another place in time. And through his assistance and through her friend Daisy, K Melissa becomes self-confident, understands her self-worth, and it's a great story for young women and young girls who are facing issues like bullying, abuse, Parental, parental cruelty, um, suicide attempts, friendships. It's a wonderful book that talks about it. Camilla herself is a wonderful, wonderful writer. She used to be a, a lyricist for the Cuban Cossacks. She was, uh, she was an editor for Faber and Faber, and she's taken all of these experiences, plus her own experiences as a, a, a Baha'i, and turned it into these two spiritual books that are just phenomenal. And she's currently working on her, uh, her memoirs that we're working with her uh, to, to, to complete. So 
I would just say, you know, Melissa and Cosby's is one of the best books I've read in a very long time. It's my honor and privilege to represent Camilla here and anywhere else that she wants to send me. She's a wonderful writer and I can't recommend her more.